Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods, proudly supported by Just Car Insurance. Today we're going to show you how to paint your wheels. And we need to paint our wheels, this is why. After a six month long build, my car was finally ready for some finishing touches. I got my hands on some big brakes front and rear and I painted my calipers red for the extra power. I was also pretty excited to show Moog my new wheels. What the f*** are you thinking, Martin? This is disgusting. Your car looks worse than before, man. Martin, they are quite literally the worst rims I've seen since the rims on the TRD laser, which looked like a robot who'd eaten a whole bunch of curry, then coughed down some metal and spurted out its electronic bumhole four rims that were then stuck on a car. What were you thinking, Martin? Gold rims on a Subaru? It's a no, people. No. They're from an STI. I don't care what crap car they were from, dude. They're what were you thinking? They're seven and a half inches wide. They're you funky. Can, you can run massive brakes. If they had a smell, they'd smell like prawns who'd been stuffed down an old man's pants, who'd then been swimming, scuba diving, in fact, through snot for three weeks. Something that you'll understand as a Nissan driver, they were cheap. I like cheap, Martin. What are we going to do? All right, we're going to respray them using two different methods. We're going to use spray cans and a spray gun. And Martin, don't tell me. Then we're going to compare the difference to see which method's better. Are we? Exactly right. A little bit of brilliance, Martin. There he is. It's me. Brilliance. Moog is right. They look crap. I headed down to VG Auto Paints to get some paint matched up. I decided to colour code my wheels the same as the rest of the car. By giving the paint shop the manufacturer's paint code for your colour, the formula is then accessed and mixed up by weight. Even a dark grey like my car has seven different colours in it, including a metallic additive. Paint shops like this are a great resource and stock just about everything you could need. These guys do free training days where you can learn the basics. What do we need, Martin? Well, in front of us we have two very different ways of painting wheels, the exact same colour. And they look deliciously tasty both ways, Martin. They do. That is your basic DIY. I'm going to do it with a rattle can method. Yep. That's right. You've got your filler primer, primer, your colour and then your clear. The stuff in the middle you need for both ways. That's Martin right. likes it both ways. Masking uh, tape. And uh, you need masking tape, uh, sanding paper uh, and... Um, Some scotch bright. I love scotch bright. Same. Cool, so that's one That's one system here. Now that's the other method. way is doing it with a gun, Martin. Tell me a little bit about that, mate. That's right. So doing it with your gun, you obviously need your gun. You need an air compressor. You need an inline filter so you don't get water and oil in your paint. You also need your base coat and your thinners and your clear coat and your filters and your plastic. It's a bit more complicated that way. Okay, so uh, the uh, paint job that we're doing with the, the gun is going to be exactly the same paint that we're doing with a can and that means we're going to get a mad comparison of gun versus paint. We're going to paint these wheels, Martin! These wheels have had a bit of a hard life. There's scratches and marks all over them. So the first thing you need to do is give them a proper clean inside and out. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is make a note on each of the tyres where the balancing weights are. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a bit of masking tape on here and then on that I'm going to write down, that's 25 grams, so I'm going to write 25G and I'm just going to put an arrow. Obviously that needs to come off so we can paint the rim. Uh, so I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. What that means is you can do this whole thing at home, totally DIY, and you don't actually need to take the tyres or the rims up to get rebalanced at a tyre shop, because that costs money and someone else does it, and that's not DIY. Next, you have to strip off any old feral gold paint and get your wheels as smooth as possible. Remember, like with all painting, prep work is everything. Thank you. 
So I'm using some 240 grit sandpaper on the areas of the rim that have damage. That means we're gonna be able to get a smoother finish, but it is leaving some lines here because it's rougher sandpaper. So then I'm gonna use a lighter sandpaper once I've fixed up all the problems, and that'll make sure we've got a smooth, uniform finish, and it's gonna be mad. Make sure you remove any sanding dust and then hit the rims with the wax and grease remover. Next up, we're gonna mask up the rims so you don't get any paint on the tires. Now, if it's a particularly cold day like today, a good little tip is to heat up your rattle cans and make them spray much more evenly. Filler primer is like bog in a can and helps to fill in any tiny scratches. Once it's dry, it can be sanded off for a clean uniform surface that's ready for a base coat. We sand that back, throw some primer on, then the base coat, then the clear, and then it's done and they look hot. You can be pretty heavy with this as it's gonna be sanded anyway. And one of the best ways to make sure you get a good job off a gun is by having the right equipment. You can do it with a really small compressor, but it's really important to have one of these water traps which stops the water from the compressed air coming through your gun into your paint and ruining it. No water. Just air. Pure air. Now for our spray guns, we're gonna be using touch-up guns. The benefits of these things are they're cheap, they're easy to control and they're perfect for doing small jobs. It's also a good idea to have two of them, one to put your primer through and one for your top coat and clear. The trick is keeping them really clean. Not like that, like that one. Clean, see? Not clean. We're using paint made by Concept, which can be used as a two-pack or acrylic product. In some areas, it's illegal to spray two-pack paints without a booth, so check with your paint shop before you buy. The primer gets thinned down four parts to one, but this can depend on things like temperature and humidity, so check first. Make sure your work area is well ventilated and get yourself a good quality spray painting mask. Matching wheels and lungs is not a good look. Okay, so here's where we're at. We've got primer on each of the rims. This one's done with the can. This one's done with the gun. The next thing to do is put on the base coat. Now, the technique's exactly the same whether you're using a can or a gun. You want to spray it on lightly and take your time. You don't want to get a run in your base coat because if you do, you're basically screwed. If you do have a run in your primer, then you can sand it back and that's not a problem. But if you get a run in your base coat, big problem. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put a base coat on this one with a can, we're going to put a base coat on this one here with the gun, we're going to leave it to dry overnight, and then tomorrow we're going to finish it off. It's going to look mad, but right now we have run out of light. Let's put on a base coat. This paint has been colour matched to the charcoal paint of the Subaru. Be sure to shake it properly and do lots of light coats so you get a nice, even finish. Looks so wet, doesn't it? Yeah. Wet and glossy over here. It looks really good. The mad thing is, it doesn't. If this dries really matte, it doesn't matter because the clear is what yeah, pours yeah. it out. The base coat for the gun is thinned down two parts to one. One of these measuring cups makes it really easy to get right. Getting a good job when you're painting with these guns, it's so much about feel. It just takes practice, and you can kind of feel when it's going right, like now. Adjust your gun's pressure, fan and paint volume controls so it flows easily out of the gun. It's a good idea to practice on an old panel until you've got it dialed in just right. If the paint's going on too heavy, then you're likely to get runs, so back off the paint flow and adjust the height from which you're spraying. The base coat appears glossy until the thinners dry out leaving the matte finish ready for clear. With base coats done on two of the wheels, we can see just how much of an improvement we've made. They didn't stay gold for very long, and after being primed, they got their own hit of colour ready for clear coat. The final part of the job is the clear coat. The base coat has had plenty of time to dry, now we make it sparkle. The job you get from clear coat in a can is not quite as shiny as what you'll get off a gun. If you buff it up, you can get some good results. Clear coat is applied over all metallic paint and it's what gives it that great glossy shine. It also protects the paint from UV and dirt and this is particularly important, especially on rims. You want to spray it nice and thick but without getting runs. This takes a lot of practice so try on something else first. Let the first coat dry or flash off and then hit it with a second or third clear coat until it's nice and even. 
don't forget to put your wheel weights in the exact same spot they came from. If in doubt, head to your local wheel shop and they can even put the weights on the inside face of the rim which makes it look even classier. They're all done and it's time to put them back on the car. We've gone from this to this. Okay, Marty's car is actually looking half decent. It's time to hit the street. Okay, so there it is. It's an awesome mod. It's very cheap and obviously makes a massive difference to the look of your car. So the question is, Marty, out of a can, what would you give the result out of 10? Probably a seven and a half, I reckon. And the gun? An eight. The difference is so slight, really. Yeah, Especially right. on something like wheels. Yeah, okay. So look, the moral of the story is, if you've got a gun, then use it. But if you've got a can, you'll get an awesome result. The other thing is as well, if you're painting your calipers red for the extra 25 kilowatts, they're going to be set off much better against a black or dark gray rim than a gold rim. I reckon you've done awesome, Marty. Thanks, man. Color-coded wheels look great. It looks good, and your whole car actually looks reasonable. <laughs> Why do we need to repaint wheels? We're gonna show you! Jesse Pop! Let's do another one.